Welcome to Public Health Matters, where we talk about matters in public health. We have some special guests today joining us from the Nashua School District as we get ready to get back to school. I want to first and foremost welcome Gina Lopez, school, head school nurse for the Nashua School District. Welcome, Gina. Thank you so very much. It's really nice to have you here. So we had to invite the school nurse on because we all know that school's starting very differently this year. And with all these challenges, we want to hear really what's going on in the schools and how you're preparing and what your role is in the school and how it's changed um, since COVID-19 really has begun. Um, so tell me first, um, how long have you been in the school, in the school system and how long have you been head nurse? Sure. So I've been in the Nashua School District for 26 years, serving as the nurse at Elm Street Middle School. And um, my new position for the last three years, I've been serving as the head nurse um, with being the school nurse at Elm Street Middle School. So you wear two hats during the day. Two hats during the day. And when you're the head nurse, um, what are you doing? Are you advising the other nurses, team meetings, or... Um, working with the administration, you know, what are your responsibilities? So basically my role is to look out for the health and wellness of all the students in the Nashua School District. Um, I work very closely with our administration, also work extremely close with the state and local health departments to make sure that all the children are safe in an educational setting. Also, um, we work with the DHHS, to make sure that um, we're in compliance also. So that's, I'm just gonna interject, yeah, the Department sure. of Health and Human Services, Human Services, just so our audience yes, knows. Sorry yeah. about that. That's yep. okay. Yeah, and also we wanna make sure that all our students are up to date with their immunizations. So um, we just basically are there for the students. Okay, great. Um, so this summer it's been a little different for you because you and I met actually at a COVID-19 testing clinic. So what have you been doing over the summer kind of in preparation and keeping abreast of all these changes that are going on in the medical community? So it's been an extremely busy summer. When we ended school in February, March, what a lot of the school nurses did was they teamed up with um, our local public health department and we helped them with their COVID um, not only testing, but the monitoring and the case tracing. And then a lot of us hooked up and we worked at the COVID testing center twice a week, which was a wonderful experience because we got to see a lot of our families, a lot of our students and um, our, their parents go through and just help and comfort them. Also what we did, uh, we had a immunization clinic. We had four immunization clinics for all the students to make sure that they were up to date with their immunization. I also had the opportunity of being on a task force for the New Hampshire School Nurses Association, which was amazing because they had, um, I rubbed shoulders with all nurses over the whole entire state of New Hampshire, and we were able to come up with a plan to help integrate everybody back into school. And because of this, I was also asked to be on the task force for our our Nashua Public Health Department, uh, Nashua School District, which was one is wonderful. So I was able to bring back that information to our district, at which helped them create the plan which we have now. So no more relaxing summer. No more relaxing summer. This was really hand, all hands on deck. Yeah. Meeting with the Nurses Association, bringing it back to Nashua. I know you work closely with public health as well. Yes. Um, and your nurses were involved, and you you did. Do some contact tracing over the summer? I did at the beginning, that? the contact tracing, because they were, you know, all of a flooded. sudden, they, they, were, they were flooded. So um, I speak Spanish fluently also, so I would take in the Spanish um, contacts and help them out that way. But it was kind of short-lived because they were able to get more help, and then I was able to concentrate on the actual nursing testing, mm -hmm. which was really exciting. So at the clinics, did your students recognize you beneath all your PPE? Because, you know... We, the two of us were just saying before this, we've never seen each other without our masks. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we're like, oh, that's what you look like. So right. uh, did your students recognize you? Did the parents recognize you? Because I would think that would give me a yeah. lot of comfort. Yeah. Basically, some, some did, some didn't. And if they didn't, I say, do you know who I am? And then they would, they would just chuckle and say, are you my school nurse? <laughs> yeah. And I know there were several school nurses out at the clinics, which is really great for the community to have that comfort level that you're still working on behalf of the community and helping out and you see that familiar face because I think people are pretty starved for 
those familiar faces and that routine. So that's really great that the nurses were doing that. Um, so tell me about your team of nurses at um, in Nashua. I, I had a, I was fortunate again to meet a bunch of them. Really enthusiastic. Really care about the students. Um, but tell me about. Um, how they're working and how they're feeling right now. So I have 23 nurses that I, I supervise. They're amazing and each one of them are very skilled and educated and all summer we have been working really really hard to establish this plan for the Nashua School District. What we did was we would meet at least once a week as in Zoom meetings because you know social distancing but it was really good because I was able to assign each nurse um, a topic and what they did was they went out and researched and what they did they came back with evidence-based plan at that from the state and all the other resources and we were able to help establish this plan that you know has rolled forth mm -hmm. so they were really really excited because they felt a part of it mm -hmm. they are so excited to return to school um, but they've been working really really hard and you know if anybody has any questions or anything, please feel free to reach out to them because they're ready and prepared. All right, so they're in the schools right now. They're in the schools right now. All right, so that's important to know for parents and for people right. in the community that if there are some questions about your student um, or what to do, you can call your school nurse and that's yeah. really a great resource um, just because the school's not back open yet fully or the right. students are att aren't attending in person. Um, that's something that you know families have access to so thank you for that um, so we talked a little bit about coronavirus already um, let's um, what are you doing to get the buildings ready and to get the students back in and um, just a little bit more detail I know we talked sure. a little bit about with the school nurses association but let's bring it back down more to the ground level about you know how, how do we really get ready for this so what we're doing is we, we work as a, we're working as a team with the school district, especially our safety um, committee and also the, um, the custodial, the, the plan ops. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do, the custodians have worked super hard this summer to deep clean the, the building. Mm -hmm. um, we're putting the desks six feet apart. They're coming up with a plan. Administration has worked over and above trying to get them safe. We're establishing, um, you know, different guidelines. Every week we meet with Dr. Talbot and Dr. Chen via Zoom, the nurses, and he has given us a lot of insight and guidelines to help the students. Like, for instance, make sure, you know, we're wearing our masks and, and what to do. We've established in each building a isolation room mm -hmm. because if there is a student that has signs and symptoms, we want to isolate them right away and assess them and make sure that they're being treated and get them out if they need to be seen by their primary care or the public health to be tested. So we're, we're establishing all these little um, things now so when the students come back, we'll be all set. You're ready. Yeah. You're ready. Yeah. So it's a lot of logistics. It's a lot of removing Definitely. furniture. Measuring, get the measuring tape out, make sure things are far. Do they, are they storing furniture off site or how are they doing that? I'm just curious if that's something you've I'm seen. I'm sure they are. That's part of the building and grounds, but I know that, I know there's also talk of putting like, you know, things on the floor to see if it's six feet apart, but they're, that's usually their thing. Right. I'm usually the health and wellness right. <laughs> and safety. Good thing you don't have to move I furniture know, I know. among many of your other <laughs> roles. It would keep you very busy. Um, so let's um, back up and look at what should parents do. So the school year starting off differently. Mm -hmm. The um, students in Nashville will be starting remotely um, with a hope to go back in October. Um, so what should parents do in the meantime? Uh, immunizations you mentioned. What else can they be doing to get their students ready and prepared? What should they be talking to their kids about? Sure. Well, s parents can be a great advocate for their students or their, chi well, their children, by teaching them now, practicing the, you know, the four basic things, show them how to properly wash their hands. I know there's been videos through the health department showing the proper, we are creating, the school nurses are creating educational videos for parents and students to help them. So the first thing is teach them proper hand washing. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is have them practice now with their masks. 
have them, you know, how to put it on properly, how to take it off properly, how to store them. That's really, really important. You know, how not to touch the edge, how to put them in their paper bags. You know, practice now. So the mask, the, um, the third thing is have them practice not touching their face. You know, their eyes, nose, and um, mouth. Very, very important right. because that's where the germs are. And that takes some adjustment. I mean, oh. even as adults, we have to yeah. train ourselves to not scratch. <laughs> yeah, not scratch. You know, don't rub your nose. Don't rub kind your of thing. nose. <laughs> yeah. Don't rub your nose. Yeah, so it is difficult. Yeah. Um, these are difficult things to, to learn. Um, and so we have our masks and we have hand washing and not touching face. Anything else? The social have distancing. Social distancing. We call it physical distancing okay. instead of social distancing because you're in the school setting. Mm -hmm. um, anywhere. It should be physical distance of six feet. We are trying to arrange everything six feet. There are some cases that it could be three feet, but we are definitely six feet in the school district. And how to keep that distance. And if you're interacting with your friends, proper tire, like you can't no hugging anymore, or you know, you can elbow and things like that. So if you teach your children these proper, you know, et school etiquette, what do you call it? Then they'll be safe in school. Mm -hmm. It'll take an adjustment, that's for sure. Oh, definitely. So we had um, the luxury of shooting a video just a few days ago about social distancing. And one thing we kind of came up with is that it's like two door widths is six feet or something else. Or with the high school students, it might be a little bit easier because they're taller. They can, you know, stretch their three foot arms out and not touch, but keep that distance between them. But these are certain little tips. And if you can use something physical um, to show your kids um, that distance, like a yardstick or something like that, um, show them what that means so that they can kind of picture it in their in their head. Right, right. How it's that apart. tangible items yeah. that that the children really, really get. Right. And we and the other thing that you emphasized was it was six feet, not twelve feet. Right. <laughs> And which I love because the nurses showed themselves, you know, we don't want to be shouting across the room to each other. You, know, you want to be six feet. You can still hear one another. You don't have to scream down the hallway or things like that. And as it is, we know with the masks on, it can be more difficult to hear. So you want to, you know, six feet is good. We don't need eight or ten. Right. Exactly. Um, exactly. So um, just going back, um, if, if parents um, need to find out if they're up to date on the immunizations, is that something you're still reaching out to them? Yes, so what um, I've encouraged all my school nurses to send either send an email or a letter or some sort of notification if your child is needs up to date vaccines. For example, seventh graders coming into you know, the incoming seventh mm -hmm. graders will need a TDAP and that's something not and that what does we that mandate. stand for. It's a um, tetanus. okay. Um, dip, diphtheria yeah. pertussis. Okay. <laughs> okay. And so it's a state requirement from New H the Hampshire, you know, state immunization. Um, and they need that to enter seventh grade. Um, we're remote right now, but when they physically enter the building, they will need to make sure that they have that shot. The majority of the nurses in our three middle schools have contacted the parents so they know who they are. If they haven't been contacted, please don't worry, you probably have it already. Okay. So that's something that people call me all the time and I said, if I haven't contacted you, you should be okay. You're good, you're you should be okay. Yeah. But it's, you know, different things. People are coming from other, like moving into the school district. Other states may have different requirements um, than New Hampshire. They will tell them when they're, when they're registering what they do need. And then kindergartners. When kindergartners come in, there's there's always like, you know, the MMR, measles, mumps, and rubella, or their varicella. A lot of times they need that also. Okay. So if you, you can't get them from your primary or your pediatrician, are there public resources available? I know you said you had some immunization clinics. Um, yes, the, the National Public Health Department is going to be setting up um, a portable van clinic. I think they're trying to get it through at my school, at Elm Street Middle School. And what we'll do is we'll send out that information and it'll have certain times that they can come either in the afternoon or the morning. I'm not sure what time they're going to be setting up and they can. And if they have any questions, call the public health department and they'll be more than happy to set up a time where they can get those immunizations. All right. And if there is a need, um, they're free. Great. So that number is 589-4500. Um, so if people do need to um, 
get in touch with the public health department and we also on our website I believe all of those things are posted so um, please don't neglect that because no, you know, please kids, don't. yeah <laughs> one it's important for general health and being out and about no matter where you are whether you're in school or out of school yeah. immunizations are just such a foundation um, for our health and especially kids because they're around each other and they're in six foot contact but still close contact. So may I make a plug there too? Yes. So as you know, of course. <laughs> so as you know, flu season is right around the corner. So we're working with the National Public Health Department to try when they have these clinics to try to um, make available the flu vaccine too because I think it's going to be very important for our students to have that flu vaccine too for that extra measure of you know getting that immunity and protection. Right. So that's going to be a big factor too, and I, that should be rolling forth the end of September, beginning of October. So look out in your, you know, for notices about that also. Right. Very important, especially um, you know, kids and parents and parents um, to get that flu vaccine because there are a lot of things coming down the pike in September and in the fall when the seasons change and people get different illnesses and and things like that. So we we want to be sure that we're protecting um, for everything right now because we have so many unknowns. Oh, definitely, definitely. And I think it's gonna be offered for parents too. Oh, that would be great. So like the whole family, bring your whole family. Yeah. <laughs> Line them up. Line them up. Uh, so I, I guess finally, what advice can you give for, for the kids? Because they've been out of school a while now. Um, they're probably anxious to come back and excited too. Um, I know my own children say, we'll wear a mask, no problem. Um, but what advice would you give as a school nurse and Missing those shiny well, little faces. Well, school nurses have always promoted infection control. I think the biggest key is that source control. You know, if they're if someone's not feeling good, don't send them to school. Don't come to school. Look for those signs and symptoms. I mean, we always promote you know healthy living. First of all, make sure that um, you know the kids are getting a good night's sleep. Eight to ten hours, we suggest to make sure that you know they're healthy. You know, keeps them healthy and strong. The second one to eat properly. You know, eat healthy foods. Get yourself strong to prevent you know getting ill. And the third one is so important: is to go out and exercise. Go in the sun. Get out. Get some fresh air. And those three factors have always been a key to keeping your immunities high. So you're not able to catch those things like strep throat or, you know, whatever is going on, the du jour of the, right. the week at school because <laughs> there's, always, there's something. always something going on. <laughs> but if they do those factors and if they're following the, you know, the four steps, you know, um, the masks and the social distancing and they're washing their hands, they'll be fine, mm -hmm. you know, and I, and I feel confident and at peace because I know that as a school district, we're doing everything we can to keep the children safe for a safe return because we want everybody to be together and to learn. Right. Well, this has been great, Gina. I really appreciate this information and I'm sure the parents watching appreciate this as well. I, um, myself, really appreciate all the work that the school nurses have had to put in to get ready uh, for the school year. And as you said, this is not new to school nurses. You're always looking at source control and infection control and monitoring classroom for something that might be communicable. Um, so um, this is just great to have you here and thank I wish you. you so much luck as you go forward um, and open up those doors. Thank you. So thank and, you. Um, to parents, don't forget to get those immunizations for your kids if you've been notified. And we'll be back in a, in a minute with a, another guest from the National School District talking about mental health and keeping your kids stress free in this changing environment.
Welcome back to Public Health Matters. Today we're going to talk to another special guest, Donna Smith, guidance counselor at Elm Street Middle School. Uh, we've asked Donna to come because we know that these times can be very stressful and anxious for our students um, across the greater Nashville region. And so welcome, Donna. Thank you so much for joining oh, us. Oh, I'm excited to be here. Thank you. So tell me first and foremost your role at Elm Street Middle School. I'm one of four guidance counselors at Elm Street Middle School, and we service approximately 1,100 students, grades 6 through 8, so ages 11 to 14 or so. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think we're probably the heart and center of a lot that goes on at Elm Street. So what kind of, um, for guidance counselors, so what kind of issues are you dealing with? Let's go back Oh, let's say nine months. Okay, okay let's go That's back pre-COVID and talk about some of the issues you were de um, the day to day that you kind of um, have responsibility for with okay. students. Okay, um, one of the great things about working at a middle school, especially in the guidance office, is no day no day is the same. So you never know what you're going to face when you walk in, which makes it exciting and challenging. Um, I would like to say that the majority of our counseling is academic based. Mm -hmm but that's really not the case. I would say probably mm -hmm. in the last 10, 15 years or so, it's more s rotating around social emotional learning. Mm -hmm. So, you know, dealing, helping kids navigate through self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, responsible decision-making, um, relationships in those areas. So what does that mean about the issues that come in the door? They're usually revolved around all the things outside of school that students are experiencing and trying to figure out how to navigate through. It's a lot of stuff, even nine months ago, out in the world that are difficult for any student, but middle school students, I think, more so, because everything to them is just bigger than life. And all of a sudden, their eyes are being wide open to the world, mm -hmm. and they're really starting to understand a lot of things, and they're confusing. They're confusing to us. Um, a lot around stress. A lot around anxiety, a lot about depression. Um, we have a lot of families that have been affected by um, the substance abuse crisis and grief and loss, whether it's expected grief and loss that happens naturally in the circle of life or whether it's unexpected stuff, health issues, social issues. Middle schoolers are all self-absorbed, right. so it's all about what's going on around them. So before they even walk in the door to try to learn, they're trying to navigate through all these other things before they're faced with the friends, the social, the teachers, the academic, mm -hmm. the struggles. So it's a lot. Yeah, so very busy. Absolutely. Very, very busy. Absolutely. Even with four of you, that's um, how many students are at Elm Street? There's about 1,100, okay, so give that's... or take. <laughs> That's quite a handful you That's have a every day. <laughs> caseload. It absolutely yeah. is. So, um, so we thought. So now we're now we're kind of mid COVID. We're not really post COVID. I wish I could say that, but yes, we're not. Um, so your issues are um, probably a lot the same, but a lot different. You are having um, kids staying home more. Um, there are probably issues that come with that as well. Um, but really, I had the pleasure of hearing you talk about stress the other day, <laughs> if you can be excited about talking about stress <laughs> and hearing about it. But really, um, um, what can students do as they start this new um, academic year with a lot of unknowns um, to manage their stress? And, and I kind of took the words that you used the other day. Mm -hmm. which, there's a lot of stress of the unknown. So maybe you could at least start with that and explain that to Absolutely. us. Absolutely. And that is definitely the key of it, is stress is usually based in uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Uncertainty about what's going to happen, am I going to be able to handle it, what's it going to look like. And right now, looking at a school year where we're really not sure, we're starting off remote, going to hybrid, maybe full time, what's it all going to look like? Mm -hmm. And we can't prepare for that. Mm -hmm. We can't predict it, we can't picture what it looks like. And that, I think, is what stirs up the anxiety. So for students and parents and administrators and teachers and guidance <laughs> counselors and everybody. Anyone who's listening. <laughs> exactly. Um, I think it's very important to just embrace the fact with the understanding that nothing is going to be the same. Mm -hmm. 
it's not going to be the same it was last year, whether that was in person or whether that was remote. It's just never going to be the same. So starting off with a mindset of comparing it to what it used to be, well, we used to do this, we mm -hmm. used to do that, you're just setting yourself up for more stress and anxiety. Rather, embrace the fact that we really don't know what this is going to look mm -hmm. like. Every day is going to kind of be an adventure, and we have to be okay with that, and we have to know that we're all in this together, we're all learning as we go, but it will be okay, and it's mm -hmm. okay if we can't predict. It's okay if we don't have the answers of what things are going to look like in two weeks or two months or two years. That, that's okay. We need to focus on the things that we can control. Mm -hmm. And that will give us the strength to power through some of the nervousness and anxieties. Mm -hmm. And what are those things that we still can control in our daily lives so that just as some reminders of like, you got this kind Exa of thing. Exactly, because you know, what you said before is their problems or their struggles or challenges if anything, have only grown. Mm -hmm. And they can't walk up the stairs or down the hall and work with us guidance counselors mm -hmm. about these issues. But they still can reach out. And I think that's the most important thing that I want to say is in spring when we started remote, everyone was new to the Zoom and the mm -hmm. Google Classroom and the Remind app and all those things. And I think students were reluctant to be reaching out to teachers and even guidance counselors on a social nature. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what we're here for. So number one, reach out the support systems that are there. Mm -hmm. Teachers, guidance counselors, administrators, reach out to your families. It's so important for families to talk about what's going on, mm -hmm. talk about the anxieties, because everyone has their own anxiety, anxieties excuse me, that are revolving around the time that we're at. So ignoring them and pretending that they're just going to get better is just, again, setting yourself up for failure. Mm -hmm. So control your own environment. For students and families, sit down. Review last year what it looked like mm -hmm. with remote. What worked? What didn't work? Don't start doing the same things if they were only the cause of stress and anxiety and family angst because mm -hmm. it's just going to repeat itself. Come up with a new plan. Mm -hmm. Try something different. And if that doesn't work again, change it. Don't mm -hmm. stick in a rut that, of things that have proven not to work. Come up with um, an outline. Mm -hmm. What's the day going to look like? What are my school hours going to be? When am I going to eat breakfast? When am I going to eat lunch? When is my afternoon break? What do I do mm -hmm. if I get overwhelmed? Um, so you're saying you, students, mm -hmm. with the help of their parents, make some of their own structure exactly. to mimic the school day, exactly. um, at least while they're remote and have that control of that exactly. um, environment that they're in. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the beauty of remote, if there can be a beauty, is that I think a lot of students are becoming aware of who they are as students, what works mm -hmm. for them. Because in the past, they were always doing things pretty much according to step one, step two, step three, step four. Mm -hmm. Now they have to kind of create their own habits, their own day, their own routine, mm -hmm. their own schedule, their own time management. Um, so they're beginning to be self-aware of what works for me as a student. Mm -hmm. And I think that's huge, especially for middle school students getting ready for high school mm -hmm. because they'll be so much more independent at the high school level. So I think some of the things that they can learn from remote can be very helpful. But yes, manage it on your own. What works for you? Mm -hmm. And it is important to go online and attend those classes and Absolutely. see the face-to-face. -face. And even if it's not, you know, like we are now six feet apart, right. it's still great to see a picture and to engage and, um, and really take that time to do your work yes. you know, yes. with your teachers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Relating, even if it's just through a screen, um, it's something that even myself have been more comfortable with over the last six or seven months. And it can be quite enjoyable. You can mm -hmm. get together and have social as well as learning, more like in a classroom setting. And likewise with the guidance counselors, we are going to be using all different type of media to reach out to all our, our parents and well as our students to open those lines of communication. Right, so it's really been a learning opportunity has. for the guidance department and for teachers Absolutely. on how to teach online, how to reach people online, how to you know, tweak things so that you are getting across your exactly. messages. Exactly, because teachers, when they went to college, they weren't taught how to teach right. like this. 
guidance counselors weren't educated and got their masters in Wi-Fi use or <laughs> do you know so your masters in Zoom in, exactly <laughs> exactly so these are things that we're, we're recreating as we go along mm -hmm. but the beauty of that is that we can do what works right so are the guidance even during remote learning the guidance counselors are available as, um, a parent a student can call the school Absolutely. and have a phone conversation that, that's still available we are still available if not directly by phone we are using email and Google Classroom and Zoom ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of us have outside lines that we're using from home mm -hmm. that parents can reach us back and forth. Absolutely. We've actually been working remotely for the past week and a half getting ready for the school year and working out schedules and registering new families. So we've been mm -hmm. pretty busy as well. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a tip, when should parents ask for even more help for their kids? When, you know, your, your suggestions are fabulous, but sometimes it's just not going to be enough. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what are those warning signals where you really have to ask for a little bit more help, um, whether it's a counselor or a therapist or those kind of things? Regarding mental health Mental or health. Yeah, I would say mental health. Okay. Because, you know, we talk about the stress and anxiety mm -hmm. when they kind of cross another line and... Um, and you know what, I have I've spoken with several families throughout the summer regarding that. And I think the unfortunate thing with the COVID was I think a lot of families withdrew from outside mm -hmm. mental health counseling or social worker counseling that they had been because they were afraid to go out in public. But mm -hmm. I think reach out. Yes, definitely reach out. I had one parent call me the other day and saying, so much has happened over the summer. Can you please give me a call? And there was a situation in the family where one of her children is starting to really experience clinical mental mm -hmm. health issues. You have, the red flags would be children really withdrawing, more than adolescents and teenagers mm -hmm. always do. You know your children. Right. Use your gut feel, too, as a, as a parent, if you feel that something is just not right. Um, withdrawing a lot more, becoming very depressed, not being happy, or not finding joy in mm -hmm. a lot of things that they used to be able to or just um, being hyper nervous, mm -hmm. you know, crying all the time or not being able to sleep or sleeping too much, you know, just that active mind. When you see that, that is the child and you are not being able to manage that, then you need to reach out. And the first step can be the school mm -hmm. because then we can further um, put them in touch you. with other resources. Absolutely, absolutely. And help give you some tips too, you know. I mean, Gina was talking about when you were interviewing her about healthy living and that has so much to do with the mental health mm -hmm. exercise and eating right and getting the proper sleep and being healthy and recognizing when stress is hitting us because it hits everybody a little bit differently mm -hmm. so kind of beginning knowing okay do I get a headache do I get an upset stomach am I just feeling really cranky what's causing that recognizing and then trying to deal with it and then mm -hmm. of course if it's something that with all your efforts and your family's efforts and your support systems, mm -hmm. it's not getting better, then definitely reach out. Okay, great, great it advice. it won't fix itself. Of course. You know? And, and we know that back to school can be very stressful absolutely. for a lot of kids, even without a pandemic. Correct. Because there is that change. There are new kids in school. There are new classes, new teachers. It's a lot to process, it and is. it doesn't just roll off of everyone's back. Mm -mm. And so now we're in a completely different situation. So I just want to... Um, you know, emphasize that the, the schools are still there for the students. Absolutely. And, you know, this is stuff you've been doing pre-COVID. You'll continue to do it in, in the midst of this and, and obviously post-COVID, too. Absolutely. Hopefully that's soon, but um, I like know. to look at how much stronger we're all going to be because <laughs> On of the this. other side. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that's, you know, that's what I think we have to think about. We have to recognize that it's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. Don't think it's going to be easy. Don't think it's going to be seamless. It's going to be difficult. There are going to be challenges. There are going to be frustrations. You're going to have computer problems. Mm -hmm. You're going to have communication problems with teachers or other, you know, staff. Those things are going to happen, but it can be fixed. Right. We can work with it. Don't just throw in the towel at the first bump in the road because it is a learning process. Right. And I think one thing that you mentioned, too, is, and we say this a lot in general as public health professionals, that we're all in this together. Correct. So this is a team effort. So this is new for teachers, new for parents, new for students. Mm -hmm. um, we've learned a lot over the summer. Um, and so hopefully going back to remote learning um, in, initially in the fall will be a little bit smoother than being mm -hmm. thrown into it exactly. in the spring. 
So we've all learned, but like you said, you know, even as a as a professional, we have trouble, you know, oh, I have to unmute or I have, no one can hear me or my <laughs> oh, screen's not working. Oh, we have laughed at ourselves all summer yeah. long. <laughs> and oh, I'm fixing my hair too much. I mean, there are all sorts of things. So um, we're all in this together and we're all human. And I think we have to give ourselves a little grace um, Absolutely. during this we time. We need to be patient with ourselves and patient with everybody else around us because we all are dealing with it maybe differently, but we're all dealing with the same thing. You're yeah. right. Absolutely. We all are in this together. We'll yeah. get through it together. Yes. Well, thank you, Donna, so much for joining us. You're very welcome. Um, I'm glad to be here. Can I just give a shout out? Elm Street Strong, <laughs> Eagles Soar. Go Eagles. Go Eagles. <laughs> Love ya. And so good luck to all the uh, parents and students and staff, and we appreciate so much of what you do to keep um, our community healthy because being in school and having a good learning environment is truly critical to the health of our community. So we'll see you next week.